Our scripture this morning is from Acts 2, verses 42 through 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All of the believers were together and had everything in common. Selling their possessions and goods, they gave to anyone as he, he had need. Every day, they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were sa being saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I kept thinking of what the early church must have gone through trying to focus on their mission and ministry in their communities. They devoted themselves to seven things. Do we? Teaching, fellowship, community meals, the original neighborhood cafe, prayer, holding everything in common, generously giving to the poor, and worship. In light of that experience, the church must be a place where people work together for common good. We have our mission. It changes occasionally, or we add to it, to follow Jesus to make disciples, to transform our community and beyond. Sometimes that mission is easier than other times, but it does sound a lot like their mission as well. In our church, no one is perfect. I know that's a shock. Many of you think that there are plenty of perfect people there are not. Mistakes will be made by all, just not all admit to making mistakes. Bad decisions will be forgiven, as they should be. People are human. Mistakes are human. All is forgiven. Even when we have trouble with forgiveness, Everything we do in our church is an outgrowth of these things that we talk about at the end of chapter 2 in the book of Acts. Worship, Bible study, mission and outreach, fellowship and hospitality and generosity. Everything we do in our church is about servant ministry and servant leadership. Ordained ministers are servant ministers, and sometimes we forget that, and you are able to remind us in many different ways. Our job is to help leaders of the church become servant leaders, and we have to remember that we are servant leaders in order to get people to be servant leaders. Our focus is on three things to preach and teach the word of God, to administer the sacraments of baptism and communion, and to order the life of the church for mission and ministry. Now, you probably know that not everyone agrees with those things that we have been called to do in each local church. My job is to help lead the church to be obedient to the mission of the church in the world. My job is not to make everyone happy. And one of my good friends sitting back there said, well, you're doing a good job of that. 
One of our great United Methodist scholars, you probably have read some of the books, Bill Eason, says that Jesus' primary criticism of leaders was about they worshiped the institution of religion instead of the mandate to be a blessing to the world. How often do we forget to be a blessing to the world? We misunderstand, we miscommunicate, we misappropriate, and we lose our focus and our commitment. Sometimes we are guilty of all of those things. Though we may see a more immediate goal as being a growing church, we also know that we need to focus on being a healthy church. Being a healthy church is more important than being a growing church. And you may be asking yourself, why would that be? Because an unhealthy church cannot grow. So we first have to focus on being a healthy church, honoring one another, respecting one another, loving one another. And beyond that, we need to branch out to the point that we are a giving church, giving of ourselves, contributing to the greater movement of God in history. Archdale Church will have a legacy just like each one of us. We not only need to know what our mission is, but we invite others to be a part of our mission. And even if the mission changes from year to year a little bit or a lot, we still focus on our mission in this community and beyond. As a church, we need to be asking ourselves, what do we value the most? What are the most important things to us in life? What is non-negotiable in our church? Things like love and grace and forgiveness for all. What is at the heart of our congregation? Then we have to think of our leaders. Do they lead? Do they sit around and watch? Do they sit around and report what we haven't done yet? Do they notice what we haven't done, but they never notice what we have accomplished? How do we take responsibility for helping them lead this church in this community? Isn't the primary role of all leaders to equip others for ministry? Shouldn't our church expect from their leaders love and respect and cooperation and willingness and boldness and eagerness, maybe even a, a little teamwork and save room for audacity? Shouldn't our leaders be willing to do whatever it takes to embrace new mission and ministry that comes to us like a total surprise? Shouldn't we be seeking God's guidance and use the gift of discernment and consensus to make decisions and to develop new ministries for this church? Shouldn't we be about growing spiritually and not only inviting others to grow spiritually, but to show them how? And what would it be like if we were to help transform lives through the power of Jesus Christ? Leaders cannot be afraid to explore the mission and ministry of this church in this community and beyond. Leaders cannot be afraid to go out on a limb, even though when they get out there, they discover they are out there by themselves. You can only be a leader of a church if you are a building block. Building, building, building. Stumbling blocks are abound, but they are not leaders. 
To be a leader of a church, you have to change your middle name to courage. What made the disciples of Jesus a community of faith? It was worshiping together. It was studying the scriptures. It was mission and ministry. It was fellowship and hospitality and generosity. There's a story I want to tell you about. It's, it was an experience by the great preacher and teacher Fred Craddock. Believe me, all of your ministers have read his books. Some even taken his preaching classes. Someone I greatly admire. And he tells a story about a church that he visited in a very big downtown prestigious church. It was the status church in town, or at least it once was. But the town began to change as towns do. And different people began showing up in the church for worship. Different faces, different colors. And the elders of the church, the leaders, were not too sure about all the changes that were happening in their town and in their church. Believe it or not, they passed a bylaw in their church which stated that from that time forward, only property owners could be members of the church. Well, you can imagine this eliminated a lot of people. Think of all the young people at the time, new families who couldn't afford to buy a house yet, and indeed the church began to decline. Dr. Craddock says he went back to that church several years later and it, in fact, had closed. The church had gone out of business, but the building had been purchased by a restaurant. And now there was a salad bar where the Lord's table used to be. And now, Dr. Craddock said, everyone was welcome at that table. It just seems that in this broken, hurting old world of ours, we spend so much time arguing and fighting over who is not welcome. What we need is a bigger mission not a smaller one. And right here in this community of faith is where the construction of our spiritual table can begin and must begin. We are friends together and let us be that message to others so that we use our time wisely and work together. Let us recognize each other as creatures from the same dust together. And let us trust in the spirit of Christ and the love of Christ and the grace of Christ, which will pull us together. Blessed are those who recognize their need for God, who acknowledge their dependence upon God and his gifts to them. Blessed are those who, though they are blessed with fine families and friends, they are still very concerned about the pain and the suffering of others. Blessed are the generous people who give of their love and their time and their money and somehow keep on giving despite difficult times or disappointments that they run into. Blessed are those who respect a person as an individual and do not prejudge him or her because of race or color or ethnic or economic background or gender issues. Blessed are the single persons who somehow are strong enough to handle their life alone for it can't be easy. And blessed are those who do not judge them. Blessed are the parents who love and respect their children as individuals. They realize that regardless of what their children are taught and how they are disciplined, 
they will learn to survive in this world of ours. And blessed are the parents of teenagers who can really listen and give patience to all suggestions and rules and regulations. Blessed are the children and the teenagers who respect their parents, who try not to inflict growing pain on their parents. Blessed are the adults who never give up on their grown children or grandchildren. Blessed are the peacemakers in the church who before a rift in the church is frozen and families don't like each other anymore, blessed are those peacemakers who pull things together and settle disputes and heal bruised egos and restore peace to the people of God. Blessed are those who mourn the loss of a loved one and who work through the pain and the anger without becoming depressed or anger. Blessed are those who support those who have suffered divorce and give them time and understanding and support them for the healing that needs to happen. Blessed are those who do not resent the poor or the less fortunate, but include them in our church family through neighborhood cafe and our casual worship. Blessed are the police officers and firefighters and public servants who have been martyred for trying to help the poor for justice sake. For the kingdom of God is theirs. Blessed are the men and women who in the September of their lives wonder how they can continue to serve God and all of God's people. They absolutely amaze me. At their age, they continue to serve and make us think about what we should be doing. Blessed are those who love others even when they disagree with them. Blessed are those who have no idea how they are helping others to grow spiritually. They just keep on working at it. Blessed are those who we love the least because God loves them the most. Blessed are those who have issues, even when they have issues with our church. Blessed are those who have made mistakes, those who have made bad decisions, those who regret what they have done, for God will even love them more. Blessed are those selfless people who throw parties at church and then invite families and friends together, even if they're enemies. Blessed are those who give more than they take. And in like manner, blessed are those who receive and can hardly wait to give what they have been blessed with. Our life is coming at us like telephone poles on a county road that we just keep going down and seeing those telephone poles. But what a difference we can make as we give away God's love, as we give away God's mercy, as we give away God's grace, even if we think others don't deserve it. Because one day, when we get off of our pedestal, we may realize we don't deserve it either. But no matter what, God still loves us and expects us to love others, especially the unlovable. Let us pray. Gracious God, sometimes we just need to realize that you go before us and pull us in the direction that we need to be going in. You give us strength. You are our strength. 
You call us forth to be bold and courageous, even when we want to go hide. For all the things that you do for us, let us go forward and be your peace, your love, your mercy, and your grace to those who can hardly experience it. For that is what you have called us to do, and that is why we are here. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.